Whether we like it or not, Osama bin Laden changed America. With that September morning in 2001, he introduced fear and ingrained the threat of terrorism into the daily lives of anyone who lives in a big city, travels by air, or enters a federal building. For more than a decade, bin Laden managed to elude the U.S. military and intelligence establishment and taunted three U.S. presidents. That finally ended last Sunday, and the last thing bin Laden saw was a Navy SEAL in the third floor bedroom of his compound in Pakistan. Tonight, for the first time, we hear the story from President Obama, who spoke with us on Wednesday at the White House. He explains how the plan was prepared and carried out, what was going through his mind as he watched it unfold, and the secrecy leading up to his historic announcement last Sunday night. The story will continue in a moment. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of al-Qaeda. Mr. President, was this the most satisfying week of your presidency? Well, it was certainly one of the most satisfying weeks, not only for my presidency, but I think for uh, the United States since I've been president. Uh, Obviously, bin Laden had been not only uh, a symbol of terrorism, uh, but uh, a mass murderer whose Uh, had eluded justice for so long and so many families who had been affected I think had given up hope Uh, and for us to be able to definitively say we got the man who caused uh, thousands of deaths here in the United States uh, was something that I think all of us uh, were profoundly uh, grateful to be a part of. Was this uh, was the decision to launch this attack the most difficult decision is that you've made as commander-in-chief? Certainly one. Uh, you know, every time I send young men and women into uh, a war theater, that's a tough decision. Uh, and whenever you write a letter to a family uh, who's lost a loved one, uh, it's sobering. Uh, this was a very difficult decision, uh, in part because uh, the evidence that we had was not absolutely inclus- uh, conclusive. This was circumstantial evidence that he was going to be there. Obviously, it entailed enormous risk. Uh, to the guys that I sent in there. Uh, But uh, ultimately, I had so much confidence in the capacity of our guys uh, to carry out the mission uh, that I felt uh, that uh, the the risks uh, were outweighed by the potential benefit uh, of us uh, finally getting our man. How much of it was gut instinct? The the thing about gut instinct is uh, uh, if it works, then uh, you think, boy, I had good instincts. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if it doesn't, then you're going to be running uh, back in your mind all the things that told you maybe uh, you shouldn't have done it. Uh, obviously, I had enough of an instinct that uh, uh, we could be right, uh, that it was, it was worth doing. When the CIA first brought this information to you, right. what was your reaction? Was there a sense of excitement? Did this look promising from the very beginning? It, it did look promising from the beginning. I, I keep in mind that... Uh, Obviously, when I was still campaigning for president, I had said that if I ever get a a shot at bin Laden, we're going to take it. Uh, And I was subject to some criticism at the time because uh, I had said, uh, if it's in Pakistan uh, and uh, we don't uh, have the ability to to capture him in any other way, then we're going to go ahead and take the shot. Uh, So I felt very strongly that there was a strategic uh, imperative for us to go after him. Uh, shortly after I got into office, I brought Leon Panetta privately into the Oval Office, uh, and I said to him, we need to redouble our efforts in hunting bin Laden down, uh, and I want us to start putting more resources, more focus, and more urgency uh, into that mission. So by the time they came to me, uh, they had worked up uh, an uh, image of the compound, where it was, and the factors that led them to conclude that this was the best evidence that we had uh, regarding bin Laden's whereabouts since Tora Bora. But we didn't have a photograph of bin Laden in that uh, building. Uh, There was uh, no direct evidence of his presence. Uh, And so uh, the CIA continued to build the case meticulously uh, over the course course of several months. Uh, What I told them when they first came to me uh, with this evidence was, even as you guys are building a stronger intelligence case, 
let's also start building an action plan to figure out uh, if, in fact, we make a decision that uh, this is him or we've got a good chance that uh, we've got him, uh, how are we going to uh, deal with him? When was that, when you set that plan in motion? Well, they first came to me in August of last year with evidence of the compound. Uh, and they said that they had more work to do on it, but uh, at that point they had enough that uh, they felt uh, uh, that it was appropriate for us to start doing some planning. Uh, and so from that point on, we started looking at what our options might be. The vigorous planning did not begin until early this year. Uh, and obviously over the last two months it's been very intensive in which not only uh, did uh, an action plan get developed, but our guys actually started practicing uh, being able to execute. How actively were you involved in that process? About as active as any project uh, that I've been involved with uh, since I've been president. Uh, obviously uh, we have uh, extraordinary guys. Uh, our special forces are the best of the best. And so I was not involved in uh, you know, designing the initial plan, but each iteration of that plan they'd bring back to me, uh, make a full presentation. We would ask questions. Uh, we had multiple meetings in the situation room in which we would map out and we would actually have a model of the compound and discuss how this operation uh, might uh, proceed and what various options there were uh, because there was more than one way uh, in which we might go, go about this. And uh, in some ways, uh, sending in uh, choppers uh, and actually putting our guys on the ground uh, entailed some greater risks than some other options. I thought it was important though for us to be able to say that we definitely got the guy. It was important for us to be able to exploit potential information that was on the ground uh, in the compound if it did turn out to be him. Um, we thought that it was important for us not only to protect uh, uh, the lives of our guys uh, but also to try to minimize collateral damage uh, in the region because this was in a residential neighborhood. I mean, one of the ironies of this is, you know, I think the, the image that bin Laden had tried to promote was that he was uh, an ascetic living in a cave. Uh, this guy was living in a million dollar compound uh, in a residential neighborhood. Were you surprised when they came to you with this compound right in the middle of uh, uh, sort of the military center of Pakistan? There had been discussions that this guy might be hiding in plain sight. And we knew that some Al-Qaeda operatives, high-level targets, basically just blended into the crowd like this. Uh, I think we were surprised when we learned that this compound had been there for five or six years uh, and that it was in an area uh, in which um, you would think that potentially uh, uh, he would attract some attention. So yes, the answer is that we were surprised that he could maintain a compound like that for that long uh, without uh, uh, there being a tip-off. Do you believe it was built for him? We are still investigating that, uh, but uh, what is clear is that uh, the elements of the compound were structured so that nobody could see in. There were no sight lines that would enable somebody walking by or somebody in an adjoining building to see him. So it was clearly designed uh, to make sure that uh, uh, bin Laden was protected from public view. Do you have any idea how long he was there? We know he was there at least five years. Five years? Yeah. Did he move out of that compound? That we don't know yet. Um, but, but we know that uh, for five to six years, this compound was there, and our belief is, is that he was there during that time. This was your decision, yeah. whether to proceed or not, and how to proceed. What was the most difficult part of that decision? The most difficult part is always uh, the fact that you're sending guys into harm's way and there are a lot of things that could go wrong. I mean, there are a lot of moving parts here. Uh, so uh, my biggest concern was if I'm sending those guys in and Murphy's Law applies and something happens, can we still get our guys out? So that's point number one. These guys are going in uh, in uh, you know, the darkest of night uh, and they don't know what they're going to find there. They don't know if the building is rigged. They don't know if uh, you know, there are explosives that are uh, triggered by a, a particular door opening. So huge risks that these guys are taking. Um, and, and so my number one concern was if I send them in, can I get them out? 
point number two was uh, as outstanding a job as our intelligence teams did. And I, I, I cannot praise them enough. They, they did an extraordinary job with just the, the uh, slenderest of, of uh, uh, bits of information uh, to piece this all together. At the end of the day, this was still a 55-45 situation. I mean, we could not say definitively that bin Laden was there. Had he not been there, then there would have been some significant consequences. Obviously, we're going into the sovereign territory of another country and uh, landing helicopters and conducting a military operation. And so if uh, it turns out that, that it's a, uh, a wealthy uh, uh, you know, prince from uh, Dubai who's in this compound, uh, and, and you know, we've sent special forces in, um, we've got problems. Uh, so there were, uh, there were risks involved uh, geopolitically in uh, making the decision, but my number one concern was uh, uh, can our guys get in and get out safely. The fact that our special forces have become so good, these guys perform at levels that uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago uh, uh, would not have happened. Uh, I think uh, finally gave me the confidence to say, let's go ahead. I mean, it's been reported that there was some resistance from advisors and uh, planners who disagreed with the commando raid approach. Mm -hmm. uh, was it difficult for you to overcome that? One of the things that we've done here uh, is to build a team that is collegial and where everybody speaks their mind. Uh, and there's not a lot of sniping or backbiting after the fact. Uh, and what I've tried to do is make sure that every time I sit, sit down in the Situation Room, every one of my advisors around there knows I expect them to give me their best assessments. And so the fact that there were some who voiced doubts about this approach was invaluable because it may, meant the plan was sharper. It meant that we had thought through all of our options. Uh, it meant that uh, when I finally did make the decision, I was making it based on the very best information. It wasn't as if any of the folks who were voicing doubts uh, were voicing something that I wasn't already running through in my own head. How much did some of the past failures like the Iran hostage rescue attempt, how, how did that weigh in you? I mean, I was that a factor? That. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I mean, you think about Black Hawk Down, you, you think about uh, what happened with the, the Iranian rescue. Um, and, you know, I am very sympathetic to uh, the, the situation for other presidents where you make a decision, you're making your best call, your best shot, and something goes wrong. Uh, because these are tough, complicated operations. Uh, and uh, yeah, absolutely. The day before, uh, I was thinking about this quite a bit. I mean, it, it would seem to me that it sounds like you made a decision that you could accept failure. You weren't, you didn't want failure, but after looking at all the 55-45 uh, yeah. thing that you mentioned, yeah. you must have at some point concluded that it was that the advantages outweighed the it risks. Was, uh, I concluded that it was worth it. Uh, and, and the reason I concluded it was worth it was that uh, we have devoted enormous uh, blood and treasure in fighting back against Al Qaeda ever since 2001. And I said to myself that if we have a good chance of uh, not completely defeating, but badly uh, disabling Al Qaeda, uh, then it was worth both the political risks uh, as well as uh, uh, the risks to our men. After you made the decision to go ahead, you had like this incredible weekend. You surveyed the tornado damage in Alabama, you right. took your family to the shuttle launch, and this was all going on, but you knew what was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. I made the decision Thursday night, informed my team Friday morning, and then we flew off to look at the tornado damage to go to Cape Canaveral. Congratulations. To make a speech, a commencement speech, and then we had the White House Correspondents' Dinner on Saturday night. <laughs> the presidency requires you to do more than one thing at a time. This was in the back of my mind uh, all weekend. Just the back? 
uh, middle, front. <laughs> was it hard keeping your focus? Yes. Yeah. Did you have to suppress the urge to tell someone? Did you want to tell somebody? Did you want to tell Michelle? Did you tell Michelle? You know, uh, one of the great successes of this operation was that we were able to keep this thing secret. And, I, and, and it's a testimony to how seriously everybody took this operation and the understanding that any leak could end up not only uh, compromising the mission, but killing some of the guys that we were sending in there. Uh, and so very few people in the White House knew. The, the vast majority of my most senior aides did not know uh, that we were doing this. Um, and uh, you know, there, there were times where you wanted to go around and talk this through with some more folks, uh, and that just wasn't an option. Um, and, and during the course of the weekend, you know, uh, there was no doubt that uh, this was weighing on me. When we come back, President Obama relives the tension-filled moments as he and his closest advisors monitored the assault on the bin Laden compound. 